Hi everyone, Andre here. Today I want to talk to you about the Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft. This is going to be a spoiler-free review of the whole series, so stay tuned, don't skip anything. Hopefully you'll find it useful. So the Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft is a tetralogy composed of four different books. Sandwell in the Sands, The Arm of the Sphinx, The Hot King, and The Fall of Babel as you can see right here. These books were initially self-published and then later on picked up by a publisher, which is amazing to see like these works being recognized and reaching a vaster audience. These books were originally published in 2013, 14, 19, and 21 which means that this series spanned almost 10 years and gave a lot of time for the author to develop his skill at writing and make sure that his plot was strong and secure across the whole series. And even though the series spanned almost 10 years, I feel like only recently did I get a sense of this series. It only recently showed up in my radar. This book is an urban fantasy, mixed a bit with an epic fantasy style and maybe some other styles that I'm Better not say in case I spoil, since those will only show up later on in the series. And it has a great premise to start with. In this fantasy series, we follow Thomas Sandling, a school's headmaster that goes on honeymoon with his wife to the Tower of Babel. This tower is immensely tall, with each floor being its own kingdom and having their own particularities. We start our first book with Thomas losing his wife, but before they got separated, they agreed to meet at the top of the tower if they got lost. So we follow Thomas throughout these four books in this quest, meeting many people along the way, as well as many dangers. The whole reaching the top of a tower reminds me a bit of uh, this manhwa that I saw at the anime that was inspired from the manhwa that was called Tower of God. And I actually thought the Tower of God was pretty good and that got me excited to read this series. But okay, going back to the review of the series, I'm not gonna go book by book, I'm just gonna go more or less of a wider series review, I do have a score for each one of the books that you'll be seeing in future videos, but for now let's start with the review. The plot of the Books of Babel is good at doing the job it has. It has a clear premise right off the start, it says, look, we're gonna follow these characters through this world, and in this case the world is this tower, and it's gonna be a character-driven story while you find out about this world. And in fact, it delivers in the promise that it makes. It definitely went through ways that I did not expect sometimes, because I thought that the plot would be quite linear in the sense similar to what we expect in the first book, and it didn't. After the second one, it took a left turn and it just kept turning and I suddenly saw myself going through a path that I did not imagine at all. The plot from the second book onwards becomes a lot more complex, more politically driven, more action driven as well. But so is the plot innovative? Not exactly, but it can still provide plot twists enough and mysteries aplenty that I felt interested reading this book. And if you are looking for an explosive a bang of a final book, then this series definitely delivers on it. In the last book, there were so many things I did not see coming. I definitely felt like there were surprises, but the surprises were deserved, and some of them I could see them coming, but they were made in a way that was subverting my expectations. And I know a lot of people might not like the last book as much as I did, because it does introduce some new concepts into the series that were not there previously, but I thought that if you look well at the pieces, they kind of go together well, if that makes sense. But so, overall, if you're looking for a book that is just majorly plot and you have this weird or new, exciting plot that goes throughout the series, this might not be the book for you, but it's still good enough and it does a good job for me to feel hooked. As for the characters, I think this is the category that the series shines the most. Maybe together with world building, but the fact that Thomas Sandlin, our protagonist, starts this series as a clumsy, naive protagonist feels sweet and endearing, but the way it ends, it shows such a growth and such a trajectory throughout four books. And the books aren't even that big, but the fact that we saw this transformation happening across these books, and it felt like it makes sense, just makes us connect with Thomas and with all the other characters the more. And okay, I have to admit that even though the main character, Thomas Hamlin, 
did not end the series the way I imagined at the start of it, it still made sense to me. I think the trajectory it took was, it was a trajectory that a person, a normal person could take in a situation similar to that. Maybe it wouldn't be the option that I would choose, but it's definitely an option. And I like that. I like when authors don't just take the easy route or what you expect and it still makes sense. And also the people that he meets throughout these adventures, they were all so distinguishable. You clearly develop a different relationship with each one of the characters, even though you do feel overall this companionship with all the crew that he amasses. Every single character has their own backstories, their own dreams, their own achievements, and their own fears, and that makes them real, or the closest to real they can be, and you do feel like you know them almost as friends. And the way they end the story is just creates this bittersweet feeling, because you develop this relationship with these characters, you almost feel like they're real, they're people you know, and as you reach the final, you just read each chapter that has their perspective and it's almost like you're saying goodbye to them. So if you're already interested in this series, don't have to do much work. But if you're still not interested, then let me talk to you about world building. This is a fantasy world. It feels like a middle ground between a whole new fantasy world like, for example, Middle-earth of Lord of the Rings and an urban fantasy that happens in our world, like a city, some like New York City or Boston, etc. We have some familiar elements like dirigibles and some technologies like mechanical creatures or machines, let's say. And then you also have these weird new things that almost feel like magic. So it's this mixture between a soft and hard magic that exists. I mean, there's not really magic per se, but it's this mystery around things that happen in this tower. And even though like there's a lot of things that I can't exactly explain, that is also because the author doesn't choose to make that a focus of the world building, because the major component of this world building is the tower itself. The tower feels like a world. I mean, each one of the floors is its own kingdom, so you imagine the possibilities that you can explore where each floor you can do a thing completely different as long as it all makes sense. And Josiah Bancroft was able to do that. Every single floor makes sense with each other. And I think that is shows Josiah Bancroft's mastery when looking at world building and the details of the world and how to make a world coherent. As for the writing style, I feel like it hit the sweet spot. It's not too overly complex or purple prose, like you'd say. It's also not too simple. There are some parts that are sarcastic and humorous. I would say some parts felt almost like a Terry Pratchett. Of course, not as um, intense as Terry Pratchett in this world. And when I say intense, I do not say that in a negative connotation because I love this world. I think Terry Pratchett is amazing was amazing at doing um, all the Discworld books. And I actually don't think that Terry Pratchett's style would fit well with this book. But there are some sarcastic moments and there are some more humorous parts, especially at the start of the chapters when we have quotes from different books. I think Josiah Bancroft was able to balance the wit and the wisdom in the right amounts throughout the whole series. And I think the pacing of all the books is quite good. I felt the second maybe was the one that declined a bit, it felt a bit more boring to me, at least, but that could have also been because we were changing the trajectory of the plot. It wasn't anymore what was happening in the first book and things were changing, so it did feel like we were declining in terms of speed or action or development of plot. But again, you might not notice that, you might feel that it's actually a good pacing and things are changing and they're changing at the right speed. And on the opposite side, I felt like The Fall of Babel was possibly the one book that I found the most engaging out of the whole series, probably followed by Sandlin Ascends. I think Sandlin Ascends is a great entry to the book at the pacing and the writing, the action that are, are involved, everything lines up pretty well. If you can figure by now, 
regarding enjoyment, I enjoy these books a lot. If I had to rank them, I would have to say probably Fall of Babel first, Sandlin Ascends, and maybe they're actually tied. It's hard to decide between those two. But then followed by The Hot King, and in the last place is The Arm of the Sphinx. To say this, it doesn't mean that The Arm of the Sphinx is bad. I, it is quite good. It's just the one I like the least out of these four. And I think one thing that I want to refer here is that I think that and it's a combination of writing style with plot and, I don't know, the pacing. It really felt that Josiah Bancroft was doing things perfectly. He was writing the discovery or the plot twists and the characters would find them out just a page after me, which meant that I was just feeling smart enough to find out before the characters, just before them, but I wasn't it wasn't being too obvious. It wasn't like I saw it coming from 100 pages before. It would be just the previous paragraphs, the previous pages, everything suddenly would make sense. And I think that's a mark of mastery. I do think that it's very hard to do that. And when an author does that well, it, it, it gives this great feeling. And so to finalize, these are the ratings I gave to each one of these books individually. And if you want to know more or what I gave to each one of the categories, just keep following, subscribe. Eventually, I'll put these uh, videos up and you'll be able to see more in detail each one of the books. I think for the Books of Babel, a score of 4.5 stars is a pretty good score out of 5, of course, and it fits quite well. It's almost reaching the 5 stars, but there are just some things that do not fit well or could have been improved and but not enough to go to four stars i think this is a strong series and i definitely recommend it to a lot of people let me know what you think which one of these books was your favorite if you've read them all and what do you think is the strong point of this series comment down below drop a like and subscribe adios